Um, and next up, we're going to have Catherine Wehe and Michelle Langhammer, um, who are going to teach us more about building our own photovoltaic energy systems. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Michelle. I will just quickly share my um, screen. Catherine is also here with me. Um, suck. It will work out. So now you should see my screen. I hope so. Yes. So, hello, everyone. Um, I sent you um, the LibreSolar project and a little bit of the yeah, history behind it and um, the roadmap till now, um, how the project um, yeah, was developed and how the project um, is run till now and how it's running now. So our aim is how to enable anyone to build their own renewable energy system. Um, for introduction, uh, who is behind the um, Libre Pro um, Solar project? Um, you see here Martin Jäger. He's also here in the Discord um, uh, channel. So if you got a um, question, he's also here. Um, he's the main founder and main developer um, between uh, behind the Libre Solar project, and also um, the company funded um, behind that. So the Libre Solar technology. Um, it's Katrin. Um, Katrin and I, we studied together automation systems. So, um, yeah, we jumped in in the project in 2017. So these are the um, people behind the project. What is the LibreSolar project? So maybe a quick um, introduction and what we want to um, share with you um, today. So a little overview and three main um, clusters. So the LibreSolar project are uh, open source building blocks for uh, DC energy systems. So the main blocks are open hardware and software components. So the hardware components contains of solar charger. So um, basically DC DC converters. Um, contains of a battery man management system, if you're using um, lithium ion battery types um, for energy storage, um, contains community communication gateways, so also hardware um, yeah, to extract data or to control data within um, the, um, the solar charger components or the battery management, and um, the software part um, for sure, so the matching firmware for all the hardware components. But it's not just only um, hardware and software in this project, but also open educational resources. So we took also this project and um, developed um, OER um, content. Um, so teaching and learning materials, how to develop um, and to produce um, these components and therefore also to develop step-by-step -step guidelines. And for sure, in open source hardware, um, the content of a community-based um, development. So therefore, we have also a, a forum um, where we can exchange on specific topics and also the, the things behind feedback and um, requirement management. So this is a, a quick overview of the, of the main components within this project. And to see what actually you can build off, we have um, this little slide to see what um, kind of architecture you can um, build off with these um, um, building blocks. So you see here like a um, DC um, energy system. So the aim is to um, build up small scaled um, DC energy systems containing of renewable energy sources, for example, photovoltaic. Um, but you could also use like um, wind power um, if you change a little bit the firmware behind um, the charger. And um, as I said, also like lithium ion batteries um, for using battery management systems and all connected in a grid, in a DC grid um, to, yeah, to um, operate your loads, um, mainly your DC loads. But you can for sure also modularly um, add an inverter if you want to, um, yeah, if you want to power AC loads. But AC um, components is not part, not yet part of the Libre Solar project. So everything um, running on AC, um, you would now, um, in the current status, you could not use the Libre Solar um, components. Maybe some key facts behind it. The performance um, we aim is like um, on, a, on, like I said, a small, small scale. Um, system so we are here in 12 till 48 voltage dc so 12 volt like the um, standard um, um, plump um, batteries um, what you use and 48 volt if you want really like to have uh, multiple 
um, nodes of, of sources and storages and loads. Um, therefore, it's better to um, scale up the voltage till 48. And it's like up to um, two kilowatts what, what you can um, supply with. So like a little bit of hard facts. Communication standards, we also like use like LoRaWAN, Wi-Fi, CAN bus. Um, therefore, you can also like ex um, extend with um, different modules, different um, com communication modules. Yes, so this is like an overall um, yeah, architecture layout, what you can build up with. Um, to show a little bit a roadmap, so um, what was the what was the beginning of the project and where is it now? We um, try to yeah to 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 project this in a in a roadmap. So it all started 2015 um, with a little um, Arduino based um, um, not just a charge controller, but it was like a PCB um, combined with a charge controller and a battery management system. So this was like the first um, hardware developed um, based on Arduino. Um, already um, uh, already placed on GitHub, where it all started, and then we made the we made the road. Um, so we extended or we um, we differentiated um, the MPPT, so the charge um, component and the battery management system for um, modularity, which is also a key fact behind um, open source open source hardware. And yeah, therefore there was different um, development steps. So for example, in, um, in the charge controller, we had like up to 24 voltage, 20 ampere. Then we scaled it down to 10 ampere. Um, then we go uh, again a little bit more up to 20 ampere. Um, we had also like for, for mounting rails um, components. So different, um, different um, modules. Um, developed the same on the BMS side, like we had a, a big BMS with 15 cells where you can um, connect with. Then we also scaled it down to five cells to eight cells. And now the current status, um, the new BMS, which is developed, which we will also present um, uh, um, in, the, in the next slides, is like up to 16 cells, which you can, um, uh, what you can um, input, like where you can connect on the, on the battery management system. On the firmware side, was also interesting. Like like I said, we started with Arduino, so really a low entry point um, when you just start um, programming, starting writing software. Arduino is really a, a good um, basement for this. Then we start um, we changed uh, um, the microcontroller type to a STM32 um, microcontroller. Therefore, we use the Armbed um, firmware, and now like changing it to the Sapphire um, platform like for reasons um, for example like uh, the sapphire platform is a community driven um, also open source um, platform also like big companies now investing in this platform for example intel and therefore yeah at the moment like we really um, place the firmware and the platform on the sapphire part documentation like i said github we used markdown um, we tried our different static site generator for our documentation like jkill now we are viewpress um yes so this was a little bit the roadmap on this side. To give an overview on the charge controller, so what is um, the technical um, key facts on the charge controller? For sure, we have the, pa uh, the power terminals to um, connect solar battery and the load. We have a UX um, connector. This is, for example, also with Olimax. Um, you can you have here different uh, modules where you can extend like different communication modules, um, displays, etc., where you can use the UX connector. We have, like, uh, like I said, the Sapphire project running on the microcontroller. Um, we have KiCat as a uh, as a tool chain for the development. Like, also the first hardware was um, designed with Eagle, um, but we saw also the, the the power of open source software of, of open source software tool chain behind it. Um, so therefore, we changed on on KiCat. And yeah, also for communication is like a CAN bus. So the, the aim behind is to have a masterless communication in this um, in this network and also to interconnect it with the gateway. So this like a little bit um, of facts behind the charge controller. And now the current development is like our battery management system um, founded by the NXS Foundation. Um, so use case is really like also off-grid um, applications. Um, it's a community driven, uh, driven development. So you're really here free to participate on the development here. And yeah, like um, maybe also um, some of you know, we have here ship so uh, shortage. So therefore we try here to have two microcontroller options to overcome the ship um, shortage. Yeah. 
So this is from the technical side. What are the applications? Um, it's like, um, yeah, mainly also the impact we see in the global south so that people can use this hardware um, to, yeah, to build up their own um, off-grid systems. Um, for example, we made here some project research projects in India where we built like um, solar home systems and also in Africa where we built up a grid. So really like field testing um, in this area. Yeah, so this was like for my part on a technical roadmap to, uh, to show you a little bit the, the, the development behind it. And now Katrin is going to um, present you um, the educational part we have here in this project. I'm going to stand up. Yeah, let's just quickly switch sides. So, um, I mean, for sure, uh, many of you are developers uh, themselves. So, you know, if you, if you know every screw and every resistor of your project, it's really easy for you to build it on your own or build uh, the different prototypes, different versions. Um, it's a different thing if you actually, um, as an expert, as someone who already um, built something, um, tries to build um, yeah, a different project. And even if you have access to other schematics, to the bomb, to um, yeah, to the software, to the um, uh, and 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 have the knowledge. Even then, it's quite difficult. Um, and now, try to imagine someone who has never ordered a PCB, who has never soldered something, and who has never, um, um, I don't know, have seen an, an, an aluminium profile or something. Um, so this is a really really steep learning curve um, for them, and um, some may be thrown off and. Um, I don't know, never, never build it. Um, and I think there are two problems um, in, in general with um, open source hardware projects. Uh, one is the more complex the project gets, um, the more knowledge, knowledge is needed. You need to find different sources to gather this knowledge, um, to ma make yourself um, acquainted with all the tools and, and terms and whatever. And then also when many parts are um, involved in a project, um, it's not very clear. Um, you don't have a, a good overview. You don't need to know what tools do you actually need, um, the order of steps, what time is, um, is required, uh, what, what amount of time is required to build it. So, um, yeah, these are quite a lot of problems. And this is why we, um, as, as a group, decided um, to create uh, some kind of instruction manual on um, open educational resource. Yeah, well, and... Um, yeah, we also got some funding, so this also helped um, with this. Um, so um, we got the funding from the Open, um, Hamburg Open Online University. It's a, like a collaboration, like a yeah, um, 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 roof organization or some 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 um, between uh, different universities in Hamburg, and um, they try to um, support the creation of open educational resources. Um, in really um, short, open educational resources. Um, they help you to learn, to teach, and to research. Uh, they are learning, teaching, research material. They are freely accessible, openly licensed, um, Creative Commons license most um, most commonly. And this is really important. They are revisable. You can um, change them. You can add to it. Uh, you can remix them. Um, you can use them with your own materials. This all is free. This all is available. So it started actually out in 2016 with the, as we were a group of students. And um, a little bit like um, Jerry DeVos said in his talk, um, we were a little bit frustrated that um, the, the, the concept of open source was not a topic at all in our university education. So we wanted to bring this to, to educate ourselves, to use open source hardware, use open source software, um, and just to try it out. And yeah, so this is why we where we um, um, started the student group um, Collective Open Source Hardware. Um, and we also wanted to um, build um, or build upon Martin Jäger's work and use his MPPT, his electronic, his electronic parts, his, PC, his, uh, his PCBs, and build um, a whole system out of it, uh, the so-called um, solar box. So this is the solar box. Um, there already was a solar box um, made by Open Source Ecology. It was all totally open source hardware. Um, but we adapted it, so we used Martin Jäger's um, MPPT and um, the, the battery management system, and then we built our own prototype on the right. So this is um, this is basically the box we built and that you also can build in, in some form of iteration. Um, yeah, so we developed an OER, 
um, an open educational OER and an open um, educational um, resource. And basically it consists of two parts, um, some preparation part where you get to know um, the tools and the environment, um, get to know about the project, um, read stuff about it, then you order stuff. And then, um, yeah, you gather possibly in a makerspace on a fab lab because, well, they most makerspaces um, actually have all the, the tools required to, to build this because not everyone is such a, such a geek that has a garage full of um, nice stuff <laughs> um, around. Uh, so yeah, so good place to start um, would be if you if you never made anything, if you're not a maker, um, go to a, a local um, fab lab a makerspace Gather some friends because building stuff with friends is always more fun uh, than uh, alone. And yeah, follow our roadmap, follow, follow our manual that we at this point have not yet written, but we wanted to read, uh, wanted to write. And um, so for the electrical part, we laid out all the different steps you need to build um, your PCB and also for the mechanical part. So um, the, the mounting, um, the case, how to assemble the case um, using um, um, readily available materials um, and providing the, the, all the schematics, also the wiring, the electric, and so on. And actually, um, during the process of, um, of con um, yeah, creating our, our uh, open educational resources, some people actually asked us, yeah, are you, are you really sure that people who are not experts actually will be able to build such a complex system? And well, what we always said is, yeah, when you think about it, all, people all around are building pretty complex stuff you, uh, without being an ex expert, only using manuals. And yeah, they use it by going to IKEA and <laughs> buying stuff and building it there. So this is actually what we did. So we laid out our roadmap and we laid out um, the, 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 the basic construct of, the, um, of this instruction manual and then we tried it out ourselves. So we were our own test dummies and we um, um, got together um, uh, and uh, yeah, we ordered stuff. Um, then we got together in a makerspace, in a local make makerspace, the fabulous St. Pauli. Um, we, yeah, we met, we met up and tried and um, started to, to build stuff and it actually worked. So this was our outcome. So we were no expert at all. Of course, yeah, we were students, but we have never, uh, I, for example, I have not soldiered, um, uh, soldered, um, um, before. So, um, I have not mounted something in an aluminum profile. So, yeah. Um, but uh, what we um, also learned um, of this is if you actually want to collaborate, if you actually want to want to participate in the project, um, this is not enough. So an in instruction manual is not enough. You need to have the basic knowledge. You need to have the foundation. foundation. So we added, um, uh, we got a second funding round and we added to it um, a lot of educational um, resources. Um, so you can learn on our website, learn.libre.solar. Um, link will be provided in our Discord channel. Well, you can, um, yeah, you can, you can look it up and read a lot about embedded systems, about solar, about battery storage, and um, about power systems. So a lot of information was was gathered there. Um, yeah, People Solar is an interdisciplinary collaboration. There are many, many um, participants involved. Um, this is what we always um, try to also and try to involve other communities, um, educational um, institutions and so on. And our lessons learned definitely are provide guidelines for new contr uh, contributors. Um, uh, for example, coding style guidelines um, so it makes pull requests way easier. Use Git based platforms, um, use Markdown for documentation so people can actually um, easily add stuff and write their own um, annotations and, and enhance upon um, your um, educational resources and also release early release often. Um, even if it's not perfect at the, um, in, the, in the perfect state, release it. Um, make sure to mark it with batches so people know, ah, yeah, okay, so this is not the perfect stage. But um, yeah, so uh, these are definitely our lessons learned if you want to create your um, own educational resource. And yeah, we are always happy to get in contact to help um, collaborate. Awesome. This has been really great. Uh, this is a whole world of um, open photovoltaic opportunities.
maybe just one very quick high level question because we're a little bit uh, behind in this schedule but uh you guys work with high energy densities and so there's like unique safety challenges involved with that and are there any resources you can point everyone to just to think about safety um, when dealing with these high energy densities in open source actually when using 12 volt um the dc 12 volt dc system it's 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 really safe so there's actually not that i mean yeah you can burn yourself um by not cutting stuff always but Actually, this kind of, like just handling handling these kind of voltages. Um, it's DC voltage, right? So handling these kind of voltages is is, is really safe. They're safe. That's great. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Reassuring. Um, all right. Well, thank you so much, uh, Catherine and Michelle, uh, and also Martin, who is uh, in the chat. If you guys have, there's many many detailed questions for you, um, and so for following up. Thanks a lot.